Hello everyone, Genshin turned 4 years old and so did my account, which means it's time for the next review. First I will quickly go over my character, weapon and artifact count, money spent and then I show every character I built in detail. I also started this tradition to show my 3 favorite characters currently for no better reason than transitioning straight to the main appeal of gacha games. As for the characters I have unlocked, so currently I'm sitting on 21 limited 5 star characters and I do have some constellations on them, the highest one being Ayaka at constellation 3 and Kazuo at constellation 2, then Ganyu, Yaimiko and Hutao at constellation 1. Then for standard 5 stars, I'm at 5 out of 7 missing Tenari and Mona and this year I actually managed to get my first C6 5 star character, C6 Kaching, then C5 Chichi, C3 Diluc and C2 Jean. In total, that's if you add in all the constellations, that's 29 limited characters versus 21 non-limited characters. So I guess at least I'm ahead of the 50-50, but it's probably not the luckiest account ever. As for 4 stars, I have everyone except for Charlotte and Shinobu, and I'm at 18 of them at constellation 6. As for weapons, I actually did my fair share of pulls on the weapon banner and ended up with 5 limited 5 stars or 12 if you include refinements. But as for non-limited, I'm still ahead by 1, so a total of 25 5 star weapons. As for 4 stars, the ones I'm using, the level 90 ones, I'm at 38 and a small spoiler for the money segment I guess, I have a refinement 5 black sword. As for artifacts, I swear I didn't plan this, but somehow I ended up with the exact number of 450 of them at plus 20. I also put a breakdown of the sets I'm using on screen in case you are wondering which domains I mainly farmed. Of course, nowadays there are artifact strong boxes, so this statistic is probably a little bit skewed, but still, I spent a lot of time in the emblem set domain, as you will see. And of course, I won't go over every single artifact, but the ones I'm using, you will see them later when I go over the builds. Now let's finally get into the good stuff. Some of you are probably more curious about this than anything else, and it's how much money did I spend on Genshin Impact. So far it's been 655 euros, so about 14 a month on average, and for you Americans out there, that translates roughly to 730 USD currently. There isn't much else to say or show. For the past three years I only bought the Blessing of the Welkin Moon. The Battle Pass was reworked in 5.0, which actually makes it a lot better for veteran players with artifact experience, but for people like me who only care about the pulls on it at this point, it's still not super worth it in my opinion. But I bought it 5 times back when the game launched, for newer players it seems nice, that's about it, everything else in the shop is just the standard gacha, gacha packs or like currency exchange. When the game first launched I actually fell for the scam, but I learned my lesson. This page in particular is obviously ridiculous, if you are rich and willing to be scammed that's a different story, but for everyone else who isn't that fortunate, just be careful, okay? I heard too many crazy stories ever since I got into Gacha. I would consider myself a fairly active Genshin player. I think I logged in pretty much every day since the game released and kept up with the dailies, events and whatnot, so I'd say I accessed most of the free-to-play available resources. Though this is the fourth time of me reviewing this account, so I'm starting to repeat myself a lot when just talking in general about it. Also, you see all of these informations on the background on screen right now. Which is why this time I decided to do the next segment a little bit more impromptu, mostly commenting on the builds, unless I get sidetracked. <laughs> Alright, let's finally get into the builds and this is about a 10 minute clip and I just decided to do some voiceover while it plays because otherwise if I were to record all of it at once it will likely turn into a 30 minute video and who wants to hear me ramble for all that time. At C2, Barbara obviously grants extra hydro damage bonus to the on-field character, which is quite decent synergy for Moalani, I thought. And that's about it though, so I didn't feel like quote-unquote finishing her build. This is Navia quite standard. I like playing her a lot though, so I went for a personal weapon. And it's a little bit low energy recharge, but I actually play her a lot with Dori, so I guess it works out because of that. And then... This Zhongli is just a high HP build just to sustain the team. Right now obviously on the Millilith set, but whenever I feel like it's beneficial I switch him over to Akkak Petra. 
And then Kazuha, Etsy 2, he and the Onfear character obviously get an extra 200 elemental mastery, which means he only needs to reach 800 for the maximum benefit for his elemental damage buff. And somehow I got there exactly, so I actually like this build a lot. Then for Jean, I feel like uh, I don't really use her all that much, even though she is kind of good. Obviously, I default a lot to Kazuha for the Viridescent set synergy, but I actually picked her for the Selector just to unlock C2 to maybe use her more with that. Of course, it would help a lot if I had uh, Furina on this account. Then Ricey, I use him quite a bit whenever he released, but I don't know. I, it didn't click with me because whenever he falls down to 50% HP, his damage just is like non-existent anymore. So maybe I suck at playing him, but uh, even if I use like a dedicated healer like Bennett, like Risley is kind of mobile, so he easily dashes out of his burst and <laughs> it feels just awkward to me. Then Chenny, of course, she just needs attack and energy recharge, so that's it. And she is on a build that has quite high energy recharge, so she is quite consistent, I like it a lot. Then Ganyu, she was my main before Ayaka released, so um, I still have her for that reason as a profile picture, but um, yeah, lately I don't really play a lot. I guess after her skin release I picked her up a little bit, and I like to play Major Ganyu, that's why she has high elemental mastery. Chichi, another character that is just here because I... Um, wanted to unlock her echo challenge. Then Ayaka, you might be wondering why the heck is she on an emblem set? <laughs> and it's just because, especially at C3, a lot of her damage is from her burst skill, and I thought I might as well double down on it. And with the extra energy recharge, I can basically throw burst skills off cooldown. And I have refinement to Miss Splitter because I think it was on Navia's weapon banner as well. And this Clorant, quite a standard build. I even went for her craftable weapon from Fontaine. And I think I finished, I got the last piece for the artifact set, I think about two days before Netland release. So good timing on that. Unfortunately, I'm still missing a circlet or a cup for Alekino, so she still doesn't have it. Then, if you're wondering why the heck do I have C1 Yai, I just happened to get two of them in a single temple. And with that, obviously, she can burst more consistently, so I went for a lot of damage stats, but with 400 elemental mastery, she still does some decent hyper bloom damage. And Kaching, I don't really play a lot, even after I got C6, I guess I should revisit, revisit her, but you see it here from the weapon as well. I guess I switched it here, good job me, but I don't play her. I basically, I default a lot in general to the newer character, so after Clorant release, I didn't really feel a reason to, to use Kaching. And she still has decent artifact just in case, I guess. And then next, Emily, she is a weird character to me because I feel like burning is more so a setup reaction for Melt, kind of similar like um, Bloom is a setup reaction for Hyper Bloom or Burgeon. So she needed to be a little bit more like uh, Nilu, I guess. But she is just a character that does extra damage to burning targets. So a lot of the time, she just feels like she's occupying a team slot for no good reason. So if you play like Melt Burngani, for example, the extra elemental mastery from Nahida would just do better. Deepwood Memory isn't really my first choice on the it would be Gilded Dreams, but I guess it still works, and if I'm completely honest, I just don't like playing this character. His animations are super long, and he gets animation locked quite easily, and I can't be bothered. It's kind of the opposite for Nahida, I would like to have her on Deepwood Memories, but I don't have a high elemental mastery one for her, so I went for Gilded Dreams just to have higher personal damage to make up for it. And it's quite a good build, I would say, she does a lot of damage here. Then, of course, Moalani is super new, so she is nowhere near where she should be. Um, of course, Obsidian Codex is the is the artifact set uh, that is desired on here, but I don't have it yet. And, and the prototype Ember is also not the best weapon. I think the craftable from um, Font not Fontaine uh, from Netland is way better in terms of damage, but I just like playing the prototype Ember for the extra energy and um, healing. It makes it comfortable. Nilo just needs HP, of course, and uh, you saw the three-star weapon there. I don't think there are any HP substat swords in terms of three star and four star weapons, so I just went with this one for the movement speed. The buff even persists if you switch off Nilo, so my thought process was just whenever I got a move, I switch back to Nilo to move faster. <laughs> And then Ayato super standard, um, he just is on the gladiator set because I didn't feel the need to farm his own artifact set. I forgot what it's called, the one from the Chasm region. And then this is again a super, I keep saying that, but a super standard Yelan, but I'm quite proud of her. She has a lot of damage stats even though she has 230 energy recharge. 
And then Kokomi again, she just needs high energy recharge to hit the reset on her burst for the elemental skill to keep the hydrification going. And that's about it. And I think I have a decent enough build for her. And then Alekino next. Again, I'm missing the artifact set, but I think this is one of my best gladiator sets, so she does a lot of damage still. And I'm super happy to have her because I finally have a use for this um, spear. I have a refinement 5 jade spear for some reason. And I mentioned this earlier when talking about Clorant and Kaching, but I always default to the newest character, so I have a lot of Pyro main DPS that are collecting dust, like this Yoimiya or the Hutao next. But I still have builds on them just in case. And I guess now we have the Imaginarium Theater game mode, so like they, they get a ch chance to shine every now and then and there, so it's quite nice, I guess. And this hotel actually has a quite nice build now that I look at it. Yeah, 200 crit damage is, is good enough for sure. And then this Kli, you might be wondering what's going on here with 850 elemental mastery. It's definitely not a build I would recommend, but whenever, um, what's her name, Emily released, I tried to make burning as like damage reaction work, but I wasn't super impressed. So I wouldn't, again, wouldn't recommend that Kli build. Then this character, well, I don't think I have even looked at her ever since, even before Inazuma released, so... Yeah, this is definitely not a bird to go with. I don't even know why I showed her off in this clip. Then Sucrose, I think she is quite nice. I got a lot of energy recharge rolls on these like Elemental Mastery Mainstead pieces, so she can burst quite consistently. I'm actually quite happy with her build, even though I don't think she needs it. She just needs to swirl to keep her buffs up, but still. Then Rosaria, unfortunately she is on my like fifth emblem set build or something, so she is missing a lot of damage. I think I should probably dedicate some better artifacts to her, because now in the Pyro region she probably will see some nice uses. Zhang Yun, never play him anymore. I talked about Dori before um, for uh, my Navia teams, because I like her a lot there, because she fixes my energy issues on her. And of course, uh, with the Navia you only want Crystallize to feed extra like um, ammo into her to do more damage with her shots. So I play her with uh, this facial together. So Dori, Fischl, Zhongli, and Navia. Of course, Fischl here is a lot of elemental mastery, so I can flex her into other teams, but she is only there to trigger Crystallize in Navia teams anyway. This guy, I never play KV because I don't really see the... Why would I use a character that's only good, good for Bloom if I can play something like Nahida that does even more? Then I don't have Baiju, so I actually play quite a bit of Yao Yao, and I guess she gets the job done. Kirara, again a character only level to unlock her Echo. And then Jingzhou, I said I'm proud of my Yilan build, but I actually play quite a bit of Jingzhou. He still has the best hydro application, like off-field hydro application in the game, I guess. And um, you can obviously see some use of this um, whenever you play transformative reactions like Bloom, for example. Speaking of Bloom, we now have the Burgeon like specialist, I guess. And of course Toma. He even has the Flower of Paradise Lost sets. I, th I think this is a quite a good build you know, for Burgeon. And then next is Bennett. I actually went for C6 Bennett, which sounds a little bit crazy because I have Ayaka, but I just felt like it because I wanted to play him with uh, Alekino for the extra pyro damage. And at some point I was getting tilted because I was energy starved and I went crazy with energy recharge and it hasn't happened since, so I guess worth it. <laughs> this jungling is I think my best built character. Whenever I used the optimizer on the priority list this was the number one character, so this is probably like the highest artifact quality or damage quality or whatever you want to call it. Like, Yeah, this is my number one character in theory. Then all these characters are like not really built, uh, not really maxed out or whatever you want to call it. So I felt like it's, uh, it's better to just skip over them and just show the constellation levels and just save us a little bit of time here. There are still a lot of characters I want to build, like the Stia, for example. I think she can be quite good, but of course there's always the worry that um, whenever Movika or whatever her name was, the Pyro Archon comes out, that she will be replaced. 
Alright, we made it to the end. I said it before, I really enjoy taking stock and the progress I made over a year, so hopefully that applies to you as well. Anyway, it's time to end this. I'd love to see you back next time. Until then, have fun and bye-bye.